Now I've been using Blender for about six years now, and throughout that time I've developed a list of shortcuts and settings that have really sped up my workflow. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through some of the settings I highly recommend you guys check out. Now before we get started, I just want to say a huge thanks to all my patrons. If you are interested in supporting the channel or want to check out all the perks I offer, I will have a link down in the description below. Now let's go ahead and get started. Now I am going to be working in cycles in this video. Of course, you always want to set your device to GPU compute if you have one. Let's go a step further. If you go up to edit and then preferences uh, down to system, we have uh, this kind of menu right here. If you have a RTX card, which is a 2060 or better, uh, then you want to be working in optics. This is kind of the best render engine for that. And the reason if you are building a new PC, I highly recommend you stick with NVIDIA for your GPU. And so down here we have the undo steps. Of course, if you want more, you can change this number. Also, we have the video sequencer memory cache limit. This is going to be great if you have a longer frame range of footage in your editing footage or visual effects or anything that you're doing, you can set the megabytes down here. Now let's get into the interface section up here. Uh, we have this resolution scale. And so this is going to be great to actually scale the text and everything in our footage. I use around a 0.9 for me uh, specifically just to have more room to actually work inside Blender. Next down in the themes, if you don't like the default look of Blender, you can play around with some of these. Say if you come from a Maya background, you can have the look of Maya. Again, I just like using Blender Dark. Now for all of you guys that have a lower end PC, if you come down to the viewport, a uh, very important thing, the quality right here is the anti-aliasing quality. I remember when I had a bad computer, I actually used this and turned it to no anti-aliasing. Again, this is only in the viewport, so it's not gonna affect your renders, but now it should speed up the actual performance there. And so again, you can change it to however you need right here. I believe uh, by default is eight, and that's totally fine for my needs. Uh, but if you do have low end stuff, uh, make sure to decrease the anti-aliasing. Next, let's go down to animation. Now this uh, allow negative keyframe button is gonna be very useful. So you wanna make sure that is checked. And what that is gonna allow us to do is actually put our playhead and make keyframes at negative numbers. And this is great for any simulation or anything that you need to you know, animate before a frame zero. Next, let's talk about some of the default add-ons that come with Blender. Uh, so let's do the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you type in Node, you want this checked. Now this is a great quality of life feature for nodes and kind of some shortcuts there. And you're going to be using nodes constantly inside Blender, whether it's compositing, texturing, you know, anything like that, you always use nodes. Next is the Ant Landscape add-on. So if you type in Land, uh, we have this. And basically this allows us to now add landscapes to our meshes. And so Shift-A mesh, now we have this Landscape button. And so we can get a lot of meshes and assets like that uh, straight out of Blender. And then finally up here, the one that I use constantly is the Im uh, Import Images as Planes add-on. If you just type in Planes, this is it. So again, make sure that is checked. Uh, and all this is going to do is allow us to import images directly into the 3D scene and correctly, you know, aspect ratio and stuff like that. Uh, so we can use it for reference videos or reflections or anything like that. It's just a great kind of speed up workflow uh, since we use images all the time. Okay, so next let's talk about some navigation things I like to have inside Blender. So first is the orbit around selection. Whatever we have select, uh, selected, we're actually gonna rotate around instead of just rotating around wherever our cursor is. So that's really nice. The auto depth fixes an issue when you actually zoom in close to an object. If you don't have it selected, it actually you know will slow down and it gets really annoying if you need to get super pre precise. So you always just wanna have uh, that auto depth checked. And then finally, I like to zoom to mouse position. And so wherever I have my mouse is actually going to be where I actually zoom inside a scene. And so just super nice feature set there. Of course, while we're at it, let's come down to the camera view over here and talk about another way to navigate our scene. And that's actually the walk navigation. So it's kind of hidden. If you go up to the view and then go to navigation and walk navigation. Uh, now I went ahead and right clicked and uh, made a shortcut of shift F to it. So anytime I press shift F, it basically goes to this where I can use my mouse now to position the camera. And if I hit W, UASD, like any video game that you play, we can actually position the camera much more accurately. Another uh, workflow that you can do if you don't like that, you can position your kind of 3D viewport uh, wherever you want the camera to be. And then if you hold Control, Alt, and then zero on the numpad, it'll actually set the camera to that exact position. So just a nice way to kind of navigate the scene there as well. Okay, so down to key map, uh, we have uh, some of these settings here. If you like the original Blender thing where you can right click to select stuff, you can select that. Uh, the biggest thing that I use here is the open folders on single click, uh, just so we don't have to double click every folder uh, since we're going to be constantly going in folders. So it's just kind of a nightmare to have to double click everything. 
Finally, down in the file pass section, we have these asset libraries. Now, asset libraries are going to speed up your workflow 10 times. I highly recommend you guys uh, watch some videos on asset libraries, uh, download a few online, or create your own asset libraries. And so all these are, are just file paths right there. And so now if I bring out a new window, what I could do is go to the asset browser. And now I have all these assets I can choose from and literally just drag and drop them into the scene. Super easy and super fast uh, for, you know, uh, environment creation, anything anything, any type of workflow like that. Next, let's talk about some of the ways that we can speed up our renders. So over here, we have the sampling, of course. And so uh, by default, we have this denoise thing. And so denoise is actually much slower if you have a fast GPU. So I highly recommend that you guys play uh, with, around with a higher sample count and less denoise. If you do need a denoise for anything, I highly recommend that you don't do it here. Uh, instead, I would go to the view layer properties and check this denoising data button. And now what that's allowed us to do is in the compositing section, we have all of this extra data for this render layers node. And so now we have the control of one to actually denoise our image. And so let's go ahead and add a denoise node and plug our image image uh, normal to the normal and then albedo to the albedo. And now we can actually go ahead and composite stuff before we actually denoise the final image. And so that just gives us a lot more flexibility there and uh, much better than the uh, kind of default denoise thing here. Now back in the render properties, we have this light pass section. And so you can play around with some of these numbers uh, if you do want to get faster renders. Basically, this just means how many times is a light particle going to bounce uh, in this specific thing. And so for transmission, you can basically have 12 uh, things of a pure transmission uh, before it'll actually stop calculating transmission and stuff. And so these are kind of the default values. But if you do want to crank uh, up you know, the performance and get the most out of your render, uh, you can play around with some of these numbers here. The biggest thing if is uh, you don't have any reflective or refractive uh, surfaces such as glass you know mirrors anything with a low roughness value you can actually turn some of the caustics off and so this is going to save you a ton of render time since caustics is one of those things that take a lot of time to actually calculate and so if we just tell blender to automatically uh, you know don't worry about it it will save you a ton of time on rendering the other thing i like doing on bigger scenes inside of blender is uh, enabling this fast gi approximation and so gi of course is global illumination and so it's going to basically affect how many times our light bounces uh, for global illumination specifically. And so I found that this kind of speeds up some render times uh, most of the times. Uh, you do want to make sure that you're not crunching any values here. So you can see that if I kind of zoom in here, if I turn it on and off, we are having some, you know, bounce light here. Uh, you can see like right here, we have some uh, bounce light of our global illumination and it's gone once we enable it. And so that's where you can come in and specify the viewport bounces and increase that. Usually I don't stick uh, between anything below a three. And so I like sticking to three and above. And so we'll do three on the viewport and we'll say like six on the render and so now uh, that'll just help speed up our uh, render a little bit like that and then finally what i like doing uh, the most uh, this is for you low-end pc people is uh, specifying and simplifying our scene through uh, the viewport and so we can break down the subdivisions say we wanted a lower subdivision in our uh, viewport if you have any subdivision surface modifiers say uh, the biggest thing is texture limits textures eat up a lot of ram and so if you are viewing it through a viewport it's going to lag up your computer a lot because it's having to locate uh, you know load in all these 4k uh, textures and all that stuff so if we limit the texture size to say like a 512, it's going to be much faster inside of the viewport. Again, you can have it separate from the render. And so in the render now, we have the full kind of uh, texture size. So it's not going to affect our actual quality when we finally render it out. Okay, so that was just a quick overview of all the settings I constantly use and some of the ones that are, might be good for your scene to speed up your own workflow and get the results that you are looking for. Anyways, if you made it this far in the video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you consider liking and subscribing as it would help me out with with the YouTube algorithm. But anyways, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.